welcome to the Zero Five Million Dollar Podcast. I'm Sean Finder, and I'm with my co-host Ollie Whitfield. This show is brought to you by Autoclose, a vanilla soft company. Ollie, why don't you uh, introduce today's guest, or even better yet, what we're talking about today? Good to have you back, mate. It's been a little while. Done a couple episodes on my own without you, so um, nice to have you do the intro and do it better than I do. But um, we've recently just recorded a sales team budget talk so we're going to flip the switch and do the marketing team budget what do we do with it how to spend it what counts what doesn't count and all that kind of stuff let's do it i think it's gonna be a good episode so um i'm gonna you're not a marketer i'm gonna make it difficult for you how would you even start with a one million marketing budget what are you gonna do so the first thing i would do is i would make some hires and i'll tell you who those hires would be uh, and this is from past experiences. So one thing that I I regret doing was um, not hiring somebody in SEO early enough in my company. Um, I waited way too long. I didn't want to spend the money because everyone's saying, "Well, it's a long game." And as a startup, small business, I was like, "Well, I don't have the long game. I'm you know I'm here to you know scale, grow as quickly as possible." So what I would do is I would definitely get someone doing content writing and SEO right from the beginning. Because while you're building out your team, while you're building out your process, when you're building out your marketing stack, all that stuff, SEO and content will start. Um, so when you are ready, it could be a year down the road, six year, six months down the road, or a year and a half, when you really get everything in place, you'll have those SEOs, you'll have those Google rankings of your keywords and all that stuff. So I would start off with at least a few people, content writers and SEO. But I'd love to hear because you're way more of a marker than I am, Ollie. So I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, I'd start with that too. And um, probably universally, no matter what you sell, your price point, your uh, market or, or anything that you could have that's a variable, I, I would start with that probably for the reasons that you said. And pretty much every guest we've ever had on, they nearly always say that too, which is kind of weird. But um, I do think the one thing that makes a very big difference at this point, let's say if my if my answer was PPC ads, which can be expensive, people say. It really depends what you sell and yep. how much it is. So if it's for us, for example, 99 bucks a month, if it's just one person, that's going to be quite difficult. And we know from trying to make a good ROI on that. And you know, we've done okay. Sometimes there's a learning curve and sometimes the supply and demand goes up and down, but that's going to be difficult. If you sell something worth a thousand, a couple thousand, 10,000 or, or more, it's, it's fine. That doesn't matter. If you make one deal out of, say, 40K spent and you made 100K just because that's your deal price, great, well done, you did amazing. So I think that that makes a very big difference early on. But like you said, I think if you could find somebody who has a background in SEO and that kind of web dev area and they want to expand and go into other bits too, then you've got the perfect starter because like you said, you're kind of paying for, let's do SEO in the beginning and know that it's going to be long-term, but they're going to want to try and be willing to focus on as well other things in short-term gain. So that might be a good sort of hybrid to start off with. So you mentioned PPC. Now, here's a question I would have for you is I'm giving you the budget, Ali. Now, how much of that budget would you initially use to kind of um, spend just to test the different keywords, test the different PPC, test different, because you might not get the PPC right, right away. Um, with everything. So a lot of, you know, testing, manipulating, pivoting, changing words, changing different sentences and all that stuff. How much of that budget would you spend on kind of testing to get that that real good recipe of PPC? So let's say it's 25% of your entire budget is PPC for the year. Maybe that's a lot, maybe that's not. It depends on your market. Break that up by month. I know I'd probably spend six weeks, two months. It depends on what traction you see. On a bit of testing and i would keep the keep the initial investment a little bit smaller than what you want to yeah. go full-blooded with see how it goes but you have to remember with google ads it normally takes like a week probably two weeks to be honest to actually settle in with an ad it, it's weird how this works it's not kind of like ad and it goes it, it fluctuates google does stuff on the back end you've got to edit things i don't know why it kind of adds if, you, if you're targeting this, it kind of says, right, we're going to make it this, and then we're going to make it this. And, and for some reason, you have to keep telling it, no, no, I want my original uh, criteria, thanks. So yeah, I'd start off a bit slower and then expand it once you get there. So probably, you know, not half of what you want to spend a month, but not 
close to uh, to everything that you're going to spend because you want to ramp up when you see it work, not kind of scale down because it's not. Are you hiring that person internally or are you going externally to get that person to do run that PPC? I think it depends on what I'm like as a founder and my skills. If it was literally me today, uh, I'd need someone to do it. So I'd go for a part-time or, or, or an agency contractor type of thing. Um, and I know plenty of them. So that would probably be my go-to just because of my connections. But yeah, I would do that. Um, and if you're CEO and, and you've got this, maybe it's investment or something, you've got probably a lot of other things to worry about. And just spending that amount of money in the background is not your primary. So I think um, these things change so fast as well. You kind of got to be on top of it all the time. And if you're not, yeah. you're, you're pretty far behind. So probably getting that out to someone else is the best thing. So what would be the next thing that you would spend some of that budget on um, going on with that million dollar budget you're given? Million dollar budget. It's, it's a lot, isn't it? But when you break it out, it goes kind of quick. So we've already gone quarter of that on PPC and we're going to go for some SEO as well. Um, I'm, I'm going to go quite hard and deep on SEO and content. Um, and that doesn't okay. just mean blogs and those things. I think it means really establishing the, the website through over time, obviously, because it does take time. But building stuff like the massive industry report that everyone talks about. So, for example, I've recently seen um, Salesforce's top cloud 50 or something like that. It's like a mm -hmm. list of influencers. Or um, the 70,000 sales reps completed their survey. We, we do that. And that's the whole, this is branding at the same time as we can sneak in some lead gen. We can sneak in, hey, give us the email address and we'll email you a copy when it's done. Yeah, And if we did 70,000 70, leads, not that they expressed interest in the product, but the next thing that we do, the next ebook, the uh, the webinar, the podcast that we do, we're potentially able to send that to them. And then that's an even bigger footprint. So a lot of those things, if, you, if you're awareness-ing at the yeah. start, I think you can do a lot of that. And it's not tremendously expensive. It might take a while before you see, oh, we've got demos and demos on this. But that's why I say the things like the webinar afterwards, you're going to go, 70,000 people, great. Then we might get a 1,000 on a webinar, maybe, maybe even less. I don't know, but a 1,000. And then if you do a decent job with your follow-up every time, that's quite a lot of demos if you do it right. So you mentioned a lot of things there. And one of the biggest things I find as an outside person, when, I, uh, you know, when the salespeople always get mad at marketing, they blame marketing for everything, is you just mentioned webinars, you mentioned SEO, you mentioned content, you messaged all these fun stuff. But the one thing you did not mention is tracking everything okay and i think that's the most important i think one of the biggest mistakes companies make is they try a lot of different marketing channels but they never actually analyze what is the actual channel converting what am i spending what is my roi how many of those people are filling out those landing forms and becoming mqls so personally i think you could you could definitely take a million dollar budget and, and, and throw it around really quickly but the, the question is what is actually, what are you tracking? What are you analyzing? What is the, what is it, what makes up a successful marketing campaign? You mentioned 2000 people on a webinar. Personally, I rather have 50 people on a webinar with 20 people buying than having 2000 people on a webinar with 20 people buying, right? So it's all a number, but you never mentioned tracking tools. Now, would you take some of that budget and track all these different t uh, channels that you're using? So the thing about a tracking tool is they're not normally part of the budget. They're part of the feature set on tools that you need to be able to fulfill the things that we just said. And to be fair, if, if you can get 20 people to buy out for 50 person webinar, I want to know how you did it. And you can please sell me that course. And, and if you can do it twice in a row, three times in a row, I'll give you a medal. Just come exist. join, just come, just come join our webinars. Come on. Yeah, exactly. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, to, to be honest, most people would use, let's say a HubSpot. It's normally the CRM and that has the contacts that you can do your emailing out. You can do your landing pages and all that in there. I think you can do social media as well. But anyways, so that would serve as the, okay, this webinar got 1,000. And then what? what is the life cycle stage? We can see it equals yeah. demo or opportunity or closed loss or customer. Or, how have we set it up? So normally you don't say we need a tracking tool. Normally that's built into how you build everything anyway, most of the, most of the time, hopefully. And if not, Google Analytics kind of depends what you're doing though because Google Analytics would do that for you per se if you were doing a HubSpot landing page. So you've kind of got to pick which way you're going to go. And, and if it was just a website, let's say it's um, 
a low price product or, or it's self-service or it's freemium, that type of thing, yeah, Google Analytics, which is free. Yeah. Set that up. But if it's not and you're doing like webinar and emailing people, then then you need like CRM and, uh, and to work it out that way. So let's go back to we originally both, I think we both agreed upon the SEO and content is, is one of the first strategies you want to do because it's the long game. What other positions are you hiring early on um, to build that marketing team out? Are you building, are you, are you kind of finding someone that is going to manage the team or are you trying to find doers that are actually going to do things? So um, the SEO person, like I said, I think they're a bit of a hybrid. They're yeah. hopefully an SEO experienced person who wants to do more. And uh, it depends on their proficiencies, what kinds of things they're interested in and where they end up going and what makes sense. So it might be a bit of a balance here. Um, I think the PPC person is probably an external resource. So it could be ah. contract, it could be agency, however you define that. Um, the, uh, the other thing is depending on how many content writers are, again, you can use um, vendors to do it too. So count that or not. The other main role I would do is um, is have a project manager who does nothing except ask people where something is. Are you late? Do you need this? What's holding you up? They literally sit in the project management tool and that's it. Whether at the start because of just number of tasks, it's part-time. That's cool. It's not going to be too expensive. And when things get going, I think that person is kind of like the team lead, except for your, you as the founder are saying, look, this is what the directive is. Someone execute. Because if, the, if there's a lot of people doing stuff and they're not all kind of held to account by a singular person, it's all a bit of a free-for-all in a way. So that's why I think you do need I, – I always found whenever I was a project manager, the, everything worked 100 times better than if there wasn't a person who had to do it, no matter who it was. Someone gets to say, Sean, you're late. What are you doing? I need this in much nicer terms than I just did. But that was always such an important role. And, and if you don't have that, it does become a bit messy. So, so yeah, and the, the biggest thing that, I mean, we've been talking about this internally, biggest thing that a really good marketing team does better than a decent one is they just do things better and a little bit faster and a few less mistakes. It's the really small things. There's no like huge thing that they've done. It's just their proficiency, the, the process, all of that stuff, the unsexy, really boring stuff that no one wants to talk about. It is that. And a project manager is literally the person who makes that work better. So one thing that we didn't really mention that I, I mean, me coming from an outside person who's not a marketer at trade, but, you know, kind of enjoys marketing is I would probably take 10% of that budget and try different things. I would take 25K per quarter, try four things over the quarter and see if you can find, because I think one of the biggest mistakes marketing makes is they get too comfortable doing the same thing and not trying new things. And for example, and I'm not saying this is something that would work or not, but like if it was me and I'm in marketing, and I know you've recently started this, is it might not work, but I would do like TikTok. I would start doing TikTok, even though it might not work. I think it's a channel that, first off, not everyone's doing it right now. And if, but if it does work and you get something viral, it could be very useful. So I would probably take four quarters, 25,000 a quarter, try something completely out of the box. You fail, you fail. But if one of those four hit, you're going to make that. You're going to make an ROI on that hundred thousand dollars. So that's personally what I would do. I'd love to get your opinion on that. Yeah, I think whether it's ten percent of the budget or or five percent or pick a number, whatever makes sense. The main thing for that is like you got to be way ahead of these things because, like, we could have an argument right now. Let's say our lead flow goes right down off a cliff, and we don't know why. There's probably something wrong, but in the meantime, there's nothing I can do right now to solve it in in next week it's still going to be like that next month until my next webinar until my next ppc budget until my yeah. next everything happens it's not going to change yeah whereas sometimes in sales like if we're if we're low on demos right we'll we'll do a cool blitz and we can change it now whereas in marketing you can't so i think you've got to go yeah q1 we'll do maybe a virtual conference we'll try that because we haven't yeah. done that before then in q2 we'll do an in-person dinner with our top 10 accounts, if we can do that. I don't know how, but we'll try. Then in Q3, we'll do maybe, um, we'll double our PPC budget, I don't know. And Q4, you pick something else. That's the way to do it. And then you're kind of pre-registered ahead of the year and you know how to do it. And yep. as well, like to use that example, virtual conference, if you haven't done it before, you're going to get it wrong. You're going to make some mistakes. 
So you can't do it every quarter and then try and work out the next one. You, you'll you never get ahead of it. So it has to be premeditated. Perfect. But I think uh, that will round things up for this episode. I think that's a lot of good marketing stuff that we just provided. But uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, this has been a blast. And also, thank you for everybody listening. If you enjoyed the show today, don't forget to give us a five-star review wherever you're listening from and subscribe so you don't miss the, miss the next show. See you soon. And if I don't hear from everyone, have a great weekend.